Hey folks, it's Carrie Oberbrunner and I have with me Dr. Sandy Burkett. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Listen, this is so cool. I rarely get to do a book launch with people in person because a lot of the authors are all over the place, but you are my neighbor. Yeah, we found that out. We, we? found that out. And listen, we're going to have a fantastic time today. In fact, we have people who showed up um, who said, look, I can't wait. I'm excited. People have been waiting for this for days, but you've been waiting for this book for a long time. How long has this book been inside you? Somebody asked me how long did it take to write, and I said my whole life. Exactly. Yeah. I, I believe it. Yeah. You birth you birth it because you live it. Yeah, absolutely. So we are here today, and we are talking all about this edgy book. I mean, the book is beautiful, but the topic is edgy, meaning the lie your life is built on. How much do you think today of society that people have built their life on a lie? Do you think it's the majority of people? I do believe it's the majority of the people because our society wants people to succeed, but not tell anybody their problems. Yeah. And so, so they keep we, we wear these masks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I totally feel that. First time I sat down with you was in August and I was absolutely pleasantly surprised I rarely walk into a meeting mm -hmm. and have someone like massively educate me. You know, I'm just being real. Like <laughs> I learn a lot, but knowing that I was a pastor mm -hmm. and knowing that I did a doctorate and a master's, I kind of felt like, you know, in this topic, I know my stuff. But then I sat with you and I was like, oh my gosh, I thought today I am the student. Today mm -hmm. I am the learner. I want to show people um, a little bit of the chart that you came up with. It was truly amazing. I think this chart is going to help people understand what, um, you know, what the entire book is about. So I'm going to go here in just a second. And I want them to see a little bit about the book itself. Let's jump in here. Perfect. So here's the book, but let's get on to the chart because the chart blew my mind. And I think it lays it out really good. So let's let's go here. And it basically has three columns. The three columns, I think we all can admit that we fit into one of them. <laughs> but let's break <laughs> these down here. And people can still see us and, and they see us over in the corner. But you talk about how there's really victims, mm -hmm. survivors, and overcomers. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about victim. And a simple way to explain it so it's an image is a victim drowns in water, mm. a survivor treads, an overcomer walks on it. That is so good. I remember you saying that and I'm like, whoa. And there's been times in my life where I have been a victim. Mm -hmm. And there are times when I've been a survivor and there's times where I've been an overcomer. But can we be one in one category? Like, could you be a victim in your marriage but an overcomer in your finances what do you think i don't know i think you, let's say we just came and had christmas going home you may act like a child mm -hmm. and that would be a victim okay in the marketplace you're highly successful that would be an overcomer wow so you could go back and forth the goal biblically is to live life as an overcomer in every aspect wow very cool okay and you believe it's possible Absolutely. I wouldn't be writing this book. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> but I do believe it's possible. Yeah. Well, and, and look at some of these things. For example, a victim feels unprotected, mm -hmm. but a survivor feels self-protected. Explain the difference there. The victim believes that nobody's going to have their back, mm. but a survivor is so busy protecting themselves, building walls, doing things that they work at being protected. Wow. And they don't trust people. And then you have the overcomer who knows that they are protected because God is with them all the time. That's so good. That's so good. So I, I think, folks, you can start seeing some of the power. And we have a whole bunch of people over here watching. And in fact, let's go share some comments here. Stacy Green says, I would like to remain an overcomer overcomer. Bonnie, I'm at, I'm at work. Will this be pasted again? So you got people saying, man, they don't want to miss it. Yes. Mm -hmm. This will live forever on YouTube and Facebook. Michelle, 
all, all the way from Montreal. Yeah, he's managing the comments today. Tanisha doing a great job. We got Sarah over here. Lots of people are here. And folks, we're going to share with you um, all about this book today. Uh, first of all, the cover is amazing. Um, I agree. I, I like it. In fact, I'm going to show the people. We'll come back to the chart because, man, I, I just need to print that chart out every day. And look at that chart because it's so powerful. But let's go to the um, let's go to the Amazon page here, and let's talk about this because I know covers are always tough to decide, but I think this cover fits you great. What do you see with this cover? Well, we do see the card, yeah, and we do know if we pull one card out, all of it falls down. But if you look at the cards, it's really symbolic mm. of the book because nothing is secure. Yes. This is how a lot of people really are in life, mm -hmm. where one little thing, you know, one little thing, a speeding ticket or a fight or um, somebody's glare or somebody's, un, you know, almost like um, unreturned gesture of kindness. And yes. it can it can just set people off and they're they're done for months. Yes. Why? Why is that? Because. When you have issues that are unhealed, mm. then life today triggers those unhealed issues. Oh, see, I told you she's good. <laughs> and so, so what happens yeah. is people think they have to deal with those issues. Okay. But God says, no, let me heal you Ooh. so you're not triggered. Wow. But triggers are of God. Interesting. Because he wants you healed. So we actually try to bury our triggers yes. and we blame our triggers. Mm -hmm. But you're saying that really triggers can be a gift or an invitation. I believe triggers are imitation. Um, people tend to ignore them, but I believe that it helps. Like whatever you got triggered today. Yeah. When have you felt this way before? Wow. How far back can you remember that this kind of thing happened to you? The original event is the event that needs to be healed. Yeah. When it's healed, there's no scar. Mm. So you can't be triggered in that event ever again. Yeah. But a survivor puts a Band-Aid on it. Wow. Okay. And, and and I've seen, man, I've met survivors and victims, and trust me, I've been one. But <laughs> but I've been on the receiving end where you didn't even try to upset somebody. Mm -hmm. And they just, like, go off. And how do we in that moment be the overcomer when someone else is trying to suck us in to, you know, like you're the problem, it's your fault. How do we just maintain grace? What do you think? Thank you for your opinion. Interesting. Okay. So that's a good response. That's a good response. Yeah. You don't have to say anything else. Because they want you to get into the fight. They want you to explain yourself and why you do what you do. Wow. And now they hook you. That's so good. That's so good. I'm telling you, folks, like I said, she's good. You know what? I did um, I did 30 hours of master level counseling, enough to know that I never should be a counselor. <laughs> I'm telling you. And we're in my wife's office and she's a counselor. But, But you have a gift. You, you know, you do, because we were chatting on the way here and, you know, you know, this person, Marion and, and Rob and Tony. And how long have you been doing this thing? I started in 1980. I was born. I was four years old. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that. So, yeah. so you were doing this as long as I've been in almost diapers. So but before uh, that, I think it's interesting. Yeah. I was a high school teacher. Ooh. And then before that, I was a restaurant manager for Mr. Lazarus. Wow. So I've had other careers yes. before God called me into this. And we were chatting in August when we first met. You weren't accepted as a as a female or minister. pastor. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. During the time I got ordained, yeah. it was you didn't hear of women getting ordained. Mm. And so I was sharing with you that the first pastor's meeting I went to, one of the pastors asked me to give him coffee. And I said, no, you can serve me because I'm a pastor too. That's right. That's <laughs> right. I think you said, yeah, I'll get you coffee, but then you get me coffee right, or something right. like that, right? Mm -hmm. So so you had to give, um, you were really a trailblazer. 
um, in, in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. What do you hope happens with this book? One, I hope what happens is, is that people have the ahas. Yeah. My belief is even whatever I hear somebody speak, what is one thing that I can take away? Mm. In this book, I pray there's one thing, at least one thing a person can take away. Ponder it. Allow God to use it to cause their life to transition into overcoming. Wow. And wow. I believe the church is to be overcoming. Yeah, I agree. So you think you think it's well, let, let's get into this here. If you're a child of God and if you're not an overcomer, mm -hmm. is that is that living below your potential? It is living below your potential. And then you strive to get to your potential. And when you get to your potential, you are your potential. Oh, wow. That's good. That's good. I want to show people. I, we got to go back to that chart. I'm just telling you, folks. The book, the book for this chart alone, and then she unpacks it and then goes in. I love the story. You have this, you have this male, female, um, I'm going to call it a case study in the book. Mm -hmm. And the way you position that, that couple, I'm like, wow, I can see myself in that. I can see other people I know. Are those real people? Well, we could change the name to anybody. <laughs> they're, they're, so there, it's a composite of all it's your work. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So let's talk about this one. Not able to love. A victim is not able to love. A survivor is too busy to love. What are they too busy doing? They're too busy trying to prove who they are. They're too busy trying to protect themselves. Wow. And they believe works is more important than being. Mm. An overcomer understands I am a being. Whatever God calls me to do, he's already has a plan how I'm going to do it. Yeah. I don't have to figure it out, mm. but I need to be. I don't need to work. So what happens is people who work at uh, being accepted, yeah. work at, uh, I have to do this in order to please you so that you can love me. That It's heavy. It's heavy because you're always busy. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. This is one of my favorite, this column, generational mm -hmm. curses. Uh, or let, let's go here first. Generational curses, personal achievements, spiritual inheritance. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you folks, you, by the way, she calls this the journey to unending joy chart. Do you do live events? Yes. Yes, I do conferences. I go to other church. I go to churches and minister um, different subjects. Besides counseling, I minister in the prophetic. Oh, yeah. So but the prophetic is very much part of a good counselor. Wow. Folks, I'm telling you, I'm so glad God connected us here. But let's talk about this. If you're a victim, you are literally caught up in generational curses. Right. And there's people who I know people who say, I feel cursed. Like they literally say that. I, in fact, I've had people say when something bad happens to them, mm -hmm. I'm cursed. And I'm like, whoa, don't say that. You're, you're, you're projecting a future you don't want. But talk to us about victim, survivor, and an overcomer with this column. A generational curse is that you live out the sins of the past generations, mm. but you may not know you're living it out. Okay. It may be something your family never told you about. Mm. So it's an area of your life that you have no victory over. Wow. Usually is a generational curse. Wow. Then survivor has the personal achievements. They're the ones that have all the warts on the walls. And, yeah. you know, the, the bio has all these things. So they live on what they've achieved. Mm. But a spiritual inheritance, I love this. Generational curses go down to three or four generations. Inheritance comes down 1,000. Wow. So I'm a product of a thousand generations before me that were obedient to God. That Not is by what cool. I've done. It's by what they did. I'm telling you folks, the book is called The Lie Your Life is Built On. 
And we're going to tell you what that lie is, by the way, because mm -hmm. we're, that is like the secret to the whole book. <laughs> um, but I want to share your website here for a moment because I'm, I'm sure, I mean, I see people's comments and they're like, I want more. And I know the book is only just the first step, but you have this whole thing called breakthrough what breakthrough reconciliation ministries yeah that's the ministry and this is bi um, biblical counseling training is what you're seeing right now and it's um training to teach people not to be professional counselors yeah. but just to help people this is one of our graduating classes oh my god and they're all different ages different people groups different churches um wow so training people to help their friends yeah training people to um, know in the marketplace, it's really important to understand what are you seeing in the marketplace. And so- um, This is so good. There are over 2,200 graduates in Central Ohio. Oh my gosh. Wow. Look at this, folks. What what makes a good student, like somebody who says, is it is it that they wanna go through their own healing first? Do you ever get those people? Or do you get people who say, no, I, I'm, I've now been healed. Now I want to help other people. Or is it both? <laughs> well, most of my students would tell you they come to class to learn how to help others, but they go home realizing they just got zapped by God. Wow. <laughs> that I is call so it a God good. slap, you know? It's yeah. like, it was like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. That is cool. And you have different things. You have, so you yourself do pastoral I, counseling. Mm -hmm. I do individual counseling. Folks. Who needs to reach out to Sandy? I'll tell you what, man. That's huge. So you act, you actually have people that can still get one-on-one -on -one access yes. with you. Yes. Wow. Okay. Um, and then you have ministry engagements, like what, where you go speak at another place? I might go speak to another place. I might go speak at a professional conference. Yeah. I just, I might do a weekend for another um, church okay. or ministry. Um, so I also yeah. go to Ukraine. Now we yeah. have a war there now, yeah. but we've been going to the Ukraine since 1992. And so we have a school of the prophetic there that, um, Maxime and Julia are there, um, cover the school, yeah. but we've been many places in the Eastern part of the Ukraine teaching people mm. how to have their hearts healed. And, you know, there's how, probably a lot of like, that's legit. I mean, people need to have, I can't imagine, like, forgiveness is probably a really big thing. There. Forgiveness is a big thing. Wow. You know, the people that have gone in in the Ukraine and have really taken on some of the things that God has given me to share with them. Yeah. There's, they're making it on, in the war because they know they're overcomers. Okay. They know that if they go back and they, oh, there was a bomb right beside me. That's a victim. But over here, I got it. Wow. Because God's got my back. That's amazing. So this is not some theory. This book is not about theory. This book is about legit. You get cut off on the interstate. You get a diagnosis. You get some news. I mean, this is like take it to the bank. Practical stuff. Yes. And, and that's the thing that I like. Yeah. See, not, the thing that's important to me is we can read the scriptures, but not know how to activate it. Mm. So I put it this way because I taught home ec. Yeah. I say, this is a cookbook. Now go make me a pie. Okay. But I don't teach you the techniques. Yeah. Well, if we have the Bible, we can memorize the scriptures. We yeah. can quote the scriptures, but we're not living the scriptures because we wow. don't know how to activate it. So taking the principles of the Bible and learning how to activate them mm. is the real key of changing life. That's so good. That's so good. A couple things here in our, in our last few minutes. This is so good. I want to go back to your website here because you have some other things. You have monthly coffee. What's this about? Like legit, like the, yeah. people can show up and yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, it's a monthly coffee for women. Yeah. And it's from all different ages and yeah. all different denominations. We get together and I actually share what God has given me for that night. Wow. But it mostly is an interactive meeting. Yeah. And here's the rule. We're not going to pray for anybody, your needs. 
it's a place that women can brag about themselves. Wow, that's different. Because people, women need a place to brag about themselves. Yeah. And and I know I know you enough to know when you say brag, you're talking like to literally in the right way own the the accomplishments God's doing through you. Correct. That's so good. And then you get into this free to be me conference. Mm -hmm. And so you, you've done this several times. Done that for many, many years. Wow. And it's a, a weekend conference, Friday and Saturday. It uses, the book has a lot of the principles that are in this conference. Yeah. But it, the whole purpose is to bring healing to the issues of your heart. Mm. And it is a way that people can go from uh, being a victim to an overcomer. Yeah. And many people see their lives just transformed. So the, it doesn't stop with the book. No. Uh, the book is really the first step. And then as people get the book and read it, and I love the fact that it's in it's an ebook, it's in soft cover, and very soon it's going to be in hardcover as well. You have Karen who says, I love the women's coffee. So you you have people watching. Yes. What do you want to say to your to the people that have, you know, just been impacted by what God's done through you in, in, in the ministry. What do you want to say to some of those people? Well, Karen and all of you who are online and everybody who's not on the line yet, you're just a product of what God, I'm only the vessel to deliver the message. You live the message and I'm proud of you. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> when, when a teacher says they're proud of you, that is powerful. So yeah, folks, check it out. I would get it right now. Um, I, we have seen Amazon sell out of books when we launch them, but I love this. I, I want to just go back to the back cover because there's a lot of thinking that goes into the back cover. Pain is inevitable, but suffering is optional. Mm -hmm. We were created to live in freedom, yet many of us suffer from hurts of our past that block our joy, hope, and purpose. That's a sad thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is a sad thing when somebody is not living as royalty. Yes. And then back to the chart, you have like poverty and royalty. And if you are destined and equipped for royalty and you're living below that, I mean, that is sad. But we believe the lies that hold us back and live before below God's ideals. Thankfully, there's a better way in a better world. Dr. Sandy Burkett reveals that true healing is not cognitive work but the work of the Holy Spirit. Cognitive change is temporary, requiring continual work. However, the Holy Spirit brings eternal change, transforming us from victims to overcomers. And like you said, you don't just talk about it in the book. Here's what people are going to get. They're going to get just the start of these three benefits, that our past doesn't need to define our new future. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit enables us to embrace our true purpose and joy is available and possible. I would ask people that question today. Are you living with joy? I mean, that's a that's a that's a penetrating question. Most mm -hmm. people are like, I don't even want to touch that one. Um, but this is amazing. Let's let's um, do a couple things here as we wrap up. What can people do? Do you have a do you have a newsletter? Do you have uh, a a blog? Can people follow you on Facebook? Would, where, if people like, what do they do? They go to your website and just say, I want coffee with Sandy. I want one-on-one -on -one counseling. What do they do? The coffee with Dr. Sandy, the conferences, the workshops Yes, are on the website. I love it. I don't have a blog. That's okay. Because some of my students know English is a second language for me. No way. <laughs> no way. Is it really? <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I know, I know yeah. what you're saying. I, listen, the book is amazing. I like too how it's, you know, you you get some books that are just super long and let's face it, it could have been a lot shorter, but they just went on and on and on and on. Mm -hmm. Your book, even with the appendix, folks, Sandy said to me, we got to have this in the appendix, the true process of forgiveness the healing prayers, the breaking of vows. Like I'm telling you, this is a handbook and probably my favorite line here as we close here, the favorite line right here. I'm so glad you, you're like, Carrie, we got to put this in here. 
Well, one is that verse about um, remember acceptance of pain mm -hmm. does not bring change. Pain is inevitable. Suffering is optional. Overcomers pursue kingdom joy and understand his, his joy is our backbone. But here's the thing, because you said, I can't have people leave without knowing what the lie is. Mm -hmm. Can you read that? Do you want to read that? Mm -hmm. Is that big enough? The lie most of us build our lives on is that we can save ourselves and that a survivor is the best we can hope for. The truth is we can't save ourselves, but through the Holy Spirit power, we can transform into overcomers and achieve our divine destiny. Yes. Wow, that is good. Folks, Dr. Sandy has blessed my life. She's somebody who exhibits grace too because you know with a book process there's some bumps along oh the my road. gosh yes and and you've <laughs> you've given our team grace you came at a time where we were in between some team members and and um you know we brought on some amazing team members but i'm so glad rob connected us so i got to give a shout out to rob cop mm -hmm. and um, what do you want to say uh, as we close um whether it's to anyone watching you have people here right here i'm at work I cannot listen to this. Will there be a transcript? You bet, my friend. So this is going to live on, on YouTube forever. It's going to live on this Facebook page, bookmark it, Google Dr. Sandy. Um, but uh, but what do you want to say as we, as we close today? Pain is going to be part of your life. Mm -hmm. But when we understand, because we've allowed the Holy Spirit to heal issues, Yes. Joy is a noun, not a verb. Oh. And what I want you to understand is when you understand the kingdom of God is made of righteousness, peace, and joy, we have to allow the Lord to be our backbone. And when joy is our backbone, we're on a trampoline. And when something bad happens, we lay down and then we get back up. When we're, we're victims, we never get up. Oh, that is good. That is good. Well, I am so glad that you uh, did your book. I'm glad that we met. I'm glad that we found out we're neighbors. Yeah, we are and, neighbors. And <laughs> uh, I think this is just the beginning. So um, I know who to people who to refer people to, and you really have a gift. And thank you for putting your gift in writing. Thank you for having me. All right. Take care, everybody. Get the book. Tag a friend who needs to see this and bring joy to their lives today. We'll see you.